Hey there, welcome to the shop. Today I have a very interesting device for a teardown. We are looking at a Smog Alien 220 watt e-cigarette. And no sir, we are not just taking it apart, but instead we look how the actual 220 watt power circuitry looks like. So grab yourself a snack, get your headphones ready and let us jump right in. Okay, okay, but let's get to work. What do we have here? Let's draw ourselves a picture and get an overview. At a first glance it looks like we can divide this board into three main sections. The upper part has the terminals for the two 18650 cells as well as the load output connections being negative at the upper and the positive at the bottom side of the board. So these things and the three main power MOSFETs are a clear evidence that all the high current or high power stuff is going on at the top section of the board. The lower end looks a bit busier, but here we have the tactile switches for the user input, the USB port for charging and firmware updates, a 3.3V linear regulator for providing logic level power, a boost converter configured to output about 8V, which is probably used for charging, and lastly a shunt resistor with the current sensing IC, which is probably also used for charging the batteries and for monitoring the USB current. And right between all of that, we do have the brain of this board, which is an ARM Cortex M0 from Nuoton. It's hidden behind a 0.95 inch OLED display, which seems to be driven by I2C. And yeah, that's actually it. Seems a bit overwhelming at first, but like always, this is just to get a feel for the product. It's about getting an understanding on how they laid out their stuff, what the voltage levels are, and so on. But anyways, let's focus on the high power stuff, which this video is actually about. Well, first of all, I went ahead, took my multimeter and a sheet of paper and traced out all of that stuff. And since that process is a bit tedious, I figured it's better to do that behind the scenes and instead walk you through the results. So in a nutshell, this is basically just a large buck converter with a variable output. A synchronous buck converter, to be exact. But I'll explain that in a second. First of all, there's a 1 watt low side shunt resistor. Low side because it's connected in between the return path, meaning between the coil and the negative side of the battery. This resistor is also connected to an IC of the same sort we saw at the lower side of the board. I did not find any datasheet for that, but while tracing the pins I found one connection going to an analog input pin of the microcontroller. So this part is probably a current sense amplifier used as a feedback to regulate the output. But this may not be the sole purpose of this shunt resistor. This e-cigarette is able to automatically detect if you have a coil inserted or not, and it also measures the resistance of it. So I removed the coil and hooked it up to my oscilloscope. Seems like it is shooting out about 1.5 volts every second. I'm pretty sure it's measuring the current to determine things like the resistance of the coil, if there even is a coil inserted, or if there is a short circuit. 
but let's go back and keep our eyes on the return path. One of the three MOSFETs is not used for the buck converter, but instead as a reverse polarity protection for the high power stuff. According to the datasheet, we are looking at a N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Enhancement mode simply means that it is naturally non-conductive, meaning it is normally closed. Only if you pull up the gate with respect to the source voltage, the current will start flowing. So by default, they've attached a 100k resistor to pull the gate down to the source voltage. The MOSFET is not conducting and everything's safe. But the gate is also connected to the 8V boost converter we saw earlier. Only if that starts working, the gate gets pulled high and the MOSFET conducts. This leaves us with the rest of the components, being two MOSFETs, a couple of passives, a power inductor on the backside and an unknown IC. And you guessed it, that's the buck converter assembly. And like said before, it's actually a synchronous buck converter. Hmm, we all know what a regular buck converter is, but what makes it synchronous? Well, let's take a look at a non-synchronous version. In its simplest form, it's a switch, or typically a MOSFET, an inductor, a capacitor and a diode. When switched on, the current flows through the inductor and will therefore cause the inductor to build up a magnetic field. After a short amount of time, you'd switch the MOSFET off again, the electromagnetic field collapses and the stored energy pumps a current through the attached load. Think of the inductor like it would be a flywheel. Due to its inertia, it will spin for some time, even after you stop driving it. Great, but what's that diode for? Well, once the magnetic field collapses, we need a return path for the current to flow. If we wouldn't have a diode, you can think of a vacuum building up at the MOSFET as soon as it closes. And that vacuum would actually translate to a large spike on every inductor discharge. So sounds great, let's go with a diode and call it a day. But um, wait a second. Remember that we actually switched 220 watts? At 8 volts that translates to about 27.5 amps. And even if we use a Schottky diode, we'd still have a voltage drop of about 0.4 volts. Which means our little diode would have to dissipate 11 watts of power. And then you could use this e-cigarette as a portable camping stove you wouldn't want to touch without wearing protective gloves. But luckily there's a solution for that. And at this point in time, we'd have to take a look at a synchronous buck converter. With that approach, we get rid of this diode and simply replace it with another MOSFET. Every time the upper MOSFET turns off, the new MOSFET will turn on and we have the return path. And because the voltage drop of a MOSFET is significantly lower than the one from a diode, we can switch higher loads and everything's safe. So the last remaining and unknown component here in our power circuitry is probably the buck converter driver. It's connected to both MOSFET gates and has a pin connected to the PWM output of the main MCU. The driver is responsible for switching both MOSFETs with respect to the PWM duty cycle. And that's it, that's the main power circuitry. So in a nutshell, they are constantly monitoring the current by reading the analog voltage of the current sense amplifier and then adjusting the PWM duty cycle to match the desired output power. And this all happens in software with respect to the target wattage the user has chosen. So at this point I'd actually wanted to hook up my oscilloscope and get a visual about when and how fast the gates are switching. Also I'd be curious to know the analog output of the current sense amplifier and how it correlates to the PWM. But unfortunately this unit is kinda broken and displays weird error messages. It does not respond to the selected target wattage, shows wrong values on the display and seems to output an arbitrary wattage. I only have unprotected 18650 cells, which pretty much burst into flames when over discharged. So I didn't feel too safe to continue playing around while this was running. And that might be one of the downsides of this design. I couldn't find any dedicated battery management ICs. Seems like they do that just in software to save a bug on hardware. Works fine as long as the software does. But anyways, it's always interesting to tear down existing stuff. For me, this is one of the best ways to learn more about electronics and overall systems engineering. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me and the shop. I'm doing some behind the scenes stuff about upcoming projects, my new workshop build and all the things that just don't fit in a video. At this point, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, it's awesome to have you aboard. I hope you enjoyed this video, happy hacking and I see you next time.